Well, Mark, as you come to the end of your time here in this service you've been giving and really a service of love for the saints and I think I could speak for on behalf of all that we've really appreciated your service in this yet it we know is a huge undertaking for you I don't think we realize it those of us who are not techie as to how much is involved and so thank you for that and as you as it were, closed down this service. I've just been enjoying of late the one whose service is never going to end. Our time on this earth and the things we take up in service as the servants of our Lord, we carry them out, but often the time comes that they close or a certain sphere of it closes and we move on. I'd like to just turn for a moment to Exodus 21. They said I've been pondering just a little and just share a few thoughts in connection with our Lord Jesus as a servant. And as you sign this off, as it were, and we go on with life, just been such an encouragement to my own soul to ponder the Lord Jesus and his service for us as he takes up to be a servant forever not a servant to you and I as our servant but a servant to his master but in that he serves us and so perhaps we'll just read a few verses in Exodus chapter 21 well-known passage um, to us and we love it so much such a beautiful picture of our Lord Jesus Let's read the first uh, six verses. Now these are the judgments which thou shalt set before them. If a man by a Hebrew servant six years he shall serve, and in the seventh he shall go out free for nothing. If he came in by himself, he shall go out by himself. If he were married, then his wife shall go out with him. If his master have given him a wife, and she have borne him sons or daughters, the wife and her children shall be her masters, and he shall go out by himself. And if the servant shall plainly say, I love my master, my wife, and my children, I will not go out free. Then his master shall bring him unto the judges, and he shall also bring him to the door, or unto the doorpost, and his master shall bore his ear through with an all, and he shall serve him forever. Well, as I said, we've enjoyed this so much, and others would be far more able to bring out the preciousness of it, but I just enjoy few things here you know it says if he came in by himself he was going to go out by himself or if you notice in the margin it said if he came in with his body now precious to think of our lord jesus it says there in hebrews 10 that he didn't come with those sacrifices but he came with his a body hast thou prepared me it was a body in which he would fulfill and carry out the will of God. And he did that so perfectly in his pathway here that as it were, he came to the end of his service as this servant did in his six years. And he could have gone out with his body. He could have returned to heaven. God had given him many things to do. I don't think we stop maybe perhaps and ponder that. The Lord says in John 17, I have finished the work which thou gavest me to do. We know that entailed, no doubt, the cross to some degree, but he had a service that he was here on behalf of his father, and that service was to make his father known. And so he carried that out, and he fulfilled it perfectly. And he could have returned to the father, but there was something else at stake. There was a question of a wife and children. And there was a question of that love and that devotedness to his father. And he was not willing to go out free. And he was going to go out and it was going to cost him. He was going to bear in his body the marks of that cost, the cost of our redemption. And so we can look at our Lord Jesus, that one who said, I love my master. My wife and my children, I will not go out free. We can see him there on the cross, those wounds in his hands and his feet. 
that wound in his side, and we can look at it as it were, it's still fresh to God. So we can look at those wounds, as it were, and we can say, there's the price of our redemption. But just enjoy as well that we can look at those and we can say, those wounds are the expression of the devotion of love to his master that he was willing to take that place of being a servant forever. A servant to his master, as I said. But that service flows out to you and me. And you know, it was such a delight to his father. That pl place he took as a servant, we could turn, I'm not going to turn to a lot of scriptures. I'll just quote or partially quote some to not make this go on too long. But you know, if we turn to the Isaiah, there's at least four times there it's so beautifully brought out in relation to him. Chapter 42, we get that expression, Behold my servant, mine elect, in whom my soul delighteth. Here was one who God could look down and he could find perfect delight in this one. He had served him perfectly in every way. He could speak in prophetically, I believe, in Isaiah 49. He says, my servant. It says Israel there, but I believe it's prophetically the Lord is the one who took the place of Israel to satisfy God. It says, in whom I will be glorified. And so that perfect servant, he fully glorified God in every way and everything he did. And then we can turn over to chapter 53. There, that beautiful chapter where we get the Lord Jesus and his suffering. And he says there in verse 11, My righteous servant shall, it reads, I think, in the, our translation, justify many. But the thought is, shall instruct many in righteousness. And so this servant, uh, he perfectly instructed, he perfectly revealed the mind of God in every way. But I was, what I wanted to draw our attention to was what it says in chapter 52. Chapter 52 of Isaiah, he says there, My servant, um, verse 13, shall deal prudently. He shall be exalted and extolled and very high. Well, I just enjoy thinking about that little expression, my servant shall deal prudently. You know, as we're passing through this time, we've there's been a lot of things, no doubt, that have gone through our minds, a lot of things that have passed through it. And yet, to sit back and just to realize that our Lord Jesus has taken the place of serving us, and he serves us prudently, in wisdom, with understanding in a way that meets our every need. And so I just would like to draw our attention briefly, and I won't go into a lot of detail. You can turn to these passages yourself, but I just have enjoyed that as we're passing through this time, that service is so needful. And as we go on to have that before our hearts continually, that he is here to serve us in a way that we can be sustained and be preserved in the midst of these circumstances. And so we consider his service, I'm thinking of Hebrews, uh, where we get the thought, well, excuse me, I'll go back first to the first epistle of John. We get his advocacy, we get his service as an advocate. And you know, perhaps like, maybe I'm not alone in this, but we felt the tryingness of these circumstances, and often we're, our spirits are vexed and we're tried, and yet to think of that advocate, he's there on our behalf to, to go to God when we fail and to seek to minister to us, to restore us, and how much we feel the need of that, as we have been in these times, no doubt, then to turn to Hebrews and to find him there as our high priest. His high priestly service for us. In chapter 2 of Hebrews, we read um, verse 17, Wherefore in all things it behooved him to be made like unto his brethren, that he might be a merciful and faithful high priest in things pertaining to God, 
to make reconciliation for the sins of the people, for in that he himself hath suffered. Being tempted, he is able to succor them that are tempted. Well, what a wonderful thing. Now, in the midst of the circumstances that we are passed through, this one who has taken a place of serving us has passed through it before. And he knows what it's like, and he knows exactly the service that's needed. He knows exactly how to succor us in these circumstances so that our souls can be sustained. That we don't lose our faith, we don't lose our confidence in him. These things can try us. But you know, it's in things pertaining to God that his high priestly service is. And so he wants to succor us so that we don't lose a sense of those things, of how precious he is to us. In chapter 4, we get, and we've enjoyed this much with those that have been sick, and we've spoken about the throne of grace that we can approach to. Just to think he's there, one who's been touched, was not touched with the feelings of our infirmities, but was in all points tempted like as we are, yet without sin. And so he's there, we can turn to him. At every moment, whatever we're facing, we can find him there to minister to our needs. And then in chapter 7, we find that he's there to make intercession. He's li ever liveth to make intercession for us. Chapter 7, verse 25. And so we have this high priest there at the right hand of God. And just to think of that service of intercession. Where would you and I be, with, be without his continual intercession? And so just to think of him there, the right hand of God, ever living to make intercession for us. Well, what a precious thing to consider these things at this time. When we feel such a need of them, I just enjoy it in connection with things pertaining to God. We've gone a long time without the privilege as we get in 1 Corinthians 11, where Paul says that, we come together into one place. And in that one, coming together in one place, it's to eat the Lord's Supper. But I enjoyed thinking of John and the Lord Jesus ministering to him as high priestly service there in the Isle of Patmos. And what does it say? What does John say? There he's alone. He couldn't have the remembrance of the Lord. But he uses this beautiful expression, I was in the Spirit on the Lord's Day. Well, no doubt that was the fruit of the high priestly service of our Lord Jesus on John's behalf, and it can be each of ours. Though deprived of things that we naturally or that we long to be able to do to remember our Lord, yet he wants us to still be in the Spirit on the Lord's day. And so, just to mention a few others, I want to turn to Luke before I close. But to mention a few others just in passing, to think we could turn to John 13, and there we get the Lord Jesus washing the feet of his disciples. And just this thought I enjoyed, we sometimes sing that hymn, Why should my feet grow weary of this my pilgrim way? You know, we often, and perhaps these times, there's been times of great weariness. But just to think of our Lord Jesus, he wants to come and wash our feet. He wants to minister refreshment to us. I enjoy that. That's really the thought of foot washing is refreshment. If you go back to the first time it's mentioned in the word of God, there where the angels come to Abraham. But we grow weary, but his service there to refresh us. What a wonderful thing. And then to think of that place we have as the church, the wife, and that service he's taking up now to sanctify, to cleanse us with the washing of water by the word. There again, it's his love that he had Christ love the church. And so his love for us is so great. And you know, I just enjoyed in connection with the Hebrew servant there, my wife and my children. Perhaps the children would bring before us in a sense, the thought of Israel. But I just enjoy that it is individual. Christ loved the church and he serves the church, but he loves each one of us individually. And he takes up that service towards each one of us because of his love to us individually. Well, if we were to turn to Luke's Gospel, chapter 12. Time is running by very rapidly, and I'll close it up here. But, you know, I just enjoy this thought in Luke 12. 
Um, verse 35. The Lord Jesus, he's speaking to the want to his disciples there and he says in verse 35 let your loins be girded about and your lights burning yourselves like men that wait for their lord when he will return from the wedding that when he cometh and knocketh they may open unto him immediately blessed are those servants whom the lord when he cometh shall find watching verily i say unto him that he will gird himself and make them to sit down to meet and will come forth and serve them notice the rendering of this i'm going to change verse 38 to the way it is in the new translation and if he come in the second watch, and come in the third watch, and find them so, blessed are those servants. Just enjoy that little change there, that it's not so much coming or, but it's coming and. In. He comes in the second watch, and in the third watch. You know, the Lord Jesus wants to come and minister to us. He wants to minister to us, as it were, continually. Not just on one occasion, not just on two occasions, but he's looking that we are watching for him to come and to minister to us. And so while we're in this time, I trust we're in the last watch of it, but it doesn't really matter what watch we're in. The Lord Jesus wants to come and to minister to us. And he's knocking, and we've had that brought out, the thought of the history of the church. And in the last church, the Lord is outside the door and he's knocking and no one's answering but we can answer and we can answer that knock and may we open immediately unto him you know i just enjoyed as we go through the day we're in i know this speaks of a night time but we're in a night season as we go through our day in the morning perhaps we open the door to him and we sit down with the scriptures and we read it and we go forth in the day but we go into the day and we hit the second watch we hit the third watch we're not so open. We're not so ready to have him minister. Other things are occupying our minds and our time. But he's there. He wants to us to open to him and to have him minister to us continually throughout the day. Well, may our hearts be encouraged to, to press on, not to grow weary, but to realize there's a man at the right hand of God who is dealing prudently with us. He's dealing in wisdom, he's dealing in love, his great love, wherewith he's loved us. he loves us. And he's taken this place to serve us, of service to us, in order that you and I can be sustained, be encouraged, and press on the last few moments that are left to us here. Well, I've gone beyond what you wanted for time, Mark. I trust if you need to cut it short, you're welcome to. But may our hearts be encouraged to look continually to our Lord Jesus, that one who is there, a servant forever. And he's a servant to God, but his service is so beautifully manifest to you and I, and may we know more of it and be in the good of it the last few moments till he calls us out of this scene where he's going to sit down and serve us forever. What a marvel.